everybody, uh, Mark with Northstar Hero here. Uh, today I'm doing a, a video on uh, talking a little bit about an issue we have with, uh, well, a serious but any fuel injected airplane. Uh, you can have situations where you run into issues with vapor lock. So vapor lock is basically the fuel in the fuel line vaporizes. Um, in the Cirrus, all of our fuel lines are right on top of the engine. We have a very tight cowling. So, um, you know, the engine, it does vapor lock from time to time. And if you've flown long enough, you know, in a hot summertime situation, you probably had it on the ground where you shut the boost pump off, the engine wanted to quit, uh, things like that. But it can actually happen in the air, too. So we need to be aware of that. There's a few things we can look for uh, when it comes to vapor lock situations. Um, and in the turbo, uh, the turbo we run, uh, you know, it's kind of standard practice now for everybody in the industry that's flying the Cirrus to run the, uh, the boost pump on, low boost all the time in the turbo, which does a really, really good job of suppressing vapor lock. Um, you know, especially on the ground in the turbo, I do not shut that boost pump off until I'm ready to shut the airplane down. Uh, if it does, you know, if you do shut it off, the engine dies, it's going to be very difficult to restart it. Um, but it is normally aspirated. Most people, they get to a thousand feet and they turn the boost pump off. Um, I did the same thing. However, last year I lost an engine um, over Greensboro, North Carolina. 10,000 feet. It was a hot summer day. I was flying to uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And, um, had my boost pump off 1,000 feet, just like the POH says. I got to 10,000 feet. You know, the aircraft had been sitting on the ground, had hot fuel in the tanks, been sitting in the sun. I climbed to 10,000 feet. And as you go up in altitude, the um, liquid fuel vaporizes easier. So not only is there a temperature differential, but there's also the pressure differential. So I was cruising at 10,000 feet, and the first indication that I had was my fuel flow started to flush away. So when I looked at my gallons per hour, you can see right now, 16.2, and you'll see it, it'll go up to 16.3 or so. There it goes, 16.3. Jumping around a tenth or two tenths of an hour is perfectly normal. What you really want to be careful of is when you see something like this. So you're cruising along, and okay, now it just dropped down to 15.8. All right, so now it's going back up, it's going to 16.5. So now we're getting, you know, a, a gallon to a half gallon to a gallon an hour fluctuation. It's getting pretty critical at that point. Um, you're going to see it. It's going to start out slow. You'll see a little fluctuation here and there. Um, but as soon as you start seeing that fluctuation that gets any more than, you know, 0.3 gallons or 0.4 gallons an hour, that's up and down and you're not adjusting anything, I would definitely recommend flipping the boost pump on. So what you're usually going to see when you flip the boost pump on is you're going to see the, the fuel pump jump up just a little bit, but you're also going to see it stabilize. So if it was vapor lock, and you flip that boost pump into the on position, so all we do is take our boost pump and flip it to the on position. So we flip it forward. Our fuel flow stabilized. So that's what you're looking for. That's going to be your first indication. Your temperatures will fluctuate a little bit, but your fuel flow is going to be the easiest thing to notice if you're actually getting vapor lock. You're going to see it fluctuate. And usually when it gets to about 0.4 to 0.5 gallons per hour up and down, um, that's when I start getting concerned that I might have a vapor lock issue and I'm going to go ahead and get that boost pump on. Same thing applies with the SR20 and the turbo. If you're not running the um, the boost pump, you know I would definitely uh, definitely consider doing so. Um, especially at the high altitude, you can find the turbo vapor lock becomes more of an issue. Um, and as you read your POH in the turbo, you may even need uh, high boost above 18,000 feet. So, but that's a good indication of what to look at uh, when you're looking for vapor lock. Um, like I said, you know in the summer months when it's hot outside, that's typically when you're going to get the vapor lock. But it you know it definitely can happen about any time. So always be cognizant of that, but if you do see your fuel flow jumping around, make sure to get that uh, boost pump on and try to suppress that vapor lock. All right, everybody. Um, hope that video, video was helpful, and uh, if you get a chance, check us out on uh, Facebook at facebook.com slash northstararrow, and uh, also on our website, uh, ifynorthstar.com. All right, fly safe, everybody, and uh, hope to see you out there.